Alrighty, we're going to go ahead and get started. Thank you guys for watching this recording. Jackie and I will be presenting today on the solar photo competition, Hit Me With Your Sunshot. We're really excited about this new prize, and we hope that this webinar covers any questions that you might have. But if not, this is just one of many resources, so we're here to help with anything you might need. All right, so the agenda today, we're going to do a quick overview of the solar photo competition. We're going to run through a little bit on the eligibility requirements and photo usage. We'll do a quick Hero X demo and then also cover what it means to submit to the prize. All right, so we're going to start with an overview. Jackie, you can go to the next slide. Perfect. So this prize is actually part of the American Made Challenges. This program is very exciting. To date, we've awarded over $260 million in cash prizes and support across 70 different prizes. So this is a quickly growing network of prizes and challenges. We also have an entire network of organizations and members that are able to provide that assistance for our applicants and competitors. All right, so just a little bit about this prize. The solar photo competition, Hit Me With Your Sunshot, supports CEDO and gathering impactful images of solar technologies for use in communicating information to communities, individuals, organizations working to advance solar technology. So CEDO is the Solar Energy Technologies Office under the Department of Energy. They have lots of different prizes, and this is just one of their new prizes that they've launched this year. This particular competition is to gain access to photos that will be made available to the public and will be featured in CEDO's outreach efforts. So that includes things like presentations, newsletters, educational materials, social media, and countless other engagement materials. The winners of this competition can earn up to $2,500 for a photo in one of eight categories. All right, so there's a couple different prizes you can win here. Some important things you need to know. There will be two awards per photo category. So we'll go over the photo categories in just a second, but it's important to know that there will be one winner and one runner up per category. Judges will select two overall grand prize winners and up to 200 honorable mentions will also be recognized. The following amounts will be awarded to each winner. So grand prize will be $2,500. Our category winners will be $1,000. Our category runners up will get $500. So just to reiterate, these are cash prizes. There's no strings attached. However, you'd like to use your prize funds, they're up to you. In total, we'll have 18 prizes awarded from a cash prize pool of $17,000. All right, so getting a little into these submission categories, photographers may submit up to 10 photos total in the following categories. So we have eight total, but you can only submit up to 10 photos. So going through these categories, first we have solar and weather. These will be photos capturing the interplay between solar technologies and various weather conditions. The solar workforce and installation, so photos showcasing members of solar workforce and individuals and teams behind these solar installations. So whether you are just photographing these teams or you're part of the team, that doesn't matter. Number three is concentrating solar thermal power. So photos showing CSP systems, their mechanism, and innovations in the solar sector particularly. Category four is research processes, solar technologies and details, and manufacturing. So these photos will unveil the research, development, and manufacturing processes behind the cutting edge sorry, solar technologies. These categories continue. Number five is utility scale, commercial solar, and grid integration. These photos will showcase large scale solar installations, including those visibly integrated into utility grids. Number six is community solar and multi family housing. These photos capture the role that solar plays in communities sustainability through shared solar initiatives and solar integrated multi family housing. Number seven is residential solar. So this is a little bit different than that community solar. These photos will capture solar installations of residential properties specifically. And then lastly, we have agriculture and solar, solar and nature and solar and wildlife. So this is a little bit broader category here. These photos would showcase the coexistence of agriculture and solar power and where how those solar projects interact with local wildlife. Just a note here, we'll get into this a little bit later in that eligibility section, but all of these photos must be taken within the United States or US territories. 
All right, so getting a little into this judging criterion, across all of these photos in all the different categories, we'll have four criteria that our judging panel will specifically focus on. So this first criterion is emotional appeal and impact. This photo needs to be visually powerful and portray solar energy technologies positively. Criterion two is going to be composition and content. So we're really focusing here on the organization of the object, landscape, and other people to enhance the image. We want the image to demonstrate thoughtful composition to maintain a high integrity of the main elements without cropping or distortion. And lastly, in this criterion two, the solar related content is apparent and easily identified. Criterion three here is going to be technical quality. So here we're really judging on light, exposure, and color. We want to make sure that the photo shows a skill of light, direction, character, color, contrast, things like that. And lastly, the photo is of high resolution and in focus. Lastly, on this slide, we have criterion four, which is originality. The photo is unique in perspective, angle, or content. So we really want you to be creative in the photos that you're submitting, while also really focusing on that technical quality as well as content. All right, so getting into scoring a little bit here. All of your photos will be scored on a scale of one to six, as shown in this first table right below here, based on how well they address the statements within each criterion. So those four different criteria that we just spoke about on the last slide will be ranked here from strongly disagree, which is a one, all the way to six, which is strongly agree. So now in the table below here, table two, this outlines the weight of each criterion for determining final scores. So you'll notice here that the total item score possible for each of these categories goes from one to six, but the percentage of total score is going to change a little bit per criterion. So that emotional appeal and impact is only weighted at 20%, whereas composition content and technical quality are both at 30%, and then originality back down to that 20%. So again, all of this will be in the official rules, so you'll have an opportunity to really dig into that scoring criterion and get a full understanding of how your photos will be scored. Overall, you can get a total point possible of 600. All right, thanks, Carly. Uh, next, we're gonna go into eligibility requirements and photo usage. So talking specifically about eligibility of the photographers, each photographer must be a United States citizen or legal permanent resident. If the photographer is under 18, uh, they can still apply to the price, but a parent or legal guardian must submit the photo on behalf of that photographer and accept the terms and conditions of the prize. Current federal employees and support service contractors working on a federal site might, may submit photos, but they are ineligible to receive the cash prizes from those uh, awards. Um, I will note that photos from such personnel will still be acknowledged in the competition selection announcements and through other non-monetary means of recognition. As Carly mentioned before, each photographer may submit up to 10 total photos. If a photographer wins more than three times, they will be awarded for their three highest winnings and all subsequent winning photos outside of those top three will be acknowledged through contest selection announcements and other means of recognition, but that photographer will not receive additional cash prices. All right, talking about eligibility of photos, each photo must be the original work of the photographer. So artificial intelligence or AI generated images are not allowed. Um, and additionally, the photo must be the work of that photographer themselves. Um, we will not be accepting photos that you might have paid for or bought the rights to and submitted if you were not the original photographer. Each photo must be taken within the last five years and within the United States or US territories. Each photo must be taken in accordance with federal, state, and local laws. Photos must not have any offensive, unlawful, or abusive content showing in them. Photos must not have any identifiable personnel, except for um, some specific instances we'll go over in just a second. Um, addresses, license plates, or other personally identifiable information. Uh, but any photos in which a person is recognizable, the photographer must have written permission in the form of a model release form um, that that person or um, if that person is, 
in the photo as a minor um, that that person's parent or guardian submits for them. Each photo must not violate or infringe upon another person's rights or include confidential or proprietary information or content. And just a few more eligibility requirements for photos. Each photo must exclude restrictive markings, copyright notices, logos, watermarks, business marks, um, except when featuring a technology or device with a developer's logo on it, that's okay. Each photo must be submitted as a zip file through the HeroX website using the following naming convention um, shown on the screen here. So that's photo title underscore your last name underscore category abbreviation. We'll talk about um, submitting your files through HeroX and the category abbreviations in just a few minutes. Each photo must be high resolution digital copy with a minimum size of 2100 by 1500 pixels. Again, submitted as a zip file. And if your zip file is too large for HeroX, um, I believe there's a 50 megabyte uh, upload limit. Um, you can upload those photos using a separate upload platform called Box. Um, if you're uploading images through Box, please uh, complete all of the required fields in HeroX to make sure you're uh, completing a full submission. Um, and then just check through your uh, submission process that you will be uploading your images through Box. And if you do need to upload the Box, you can email solarphoto at nrel.gov for the link to that upload page. All right, another element to eligibility is making sure photos are submitted under the Creative Commons Attribution 4.0 International License. So this allows others, including the US government, um, which includes DOE and NREL, the right to use, publish, copy, distribute, and modify the photos provided uh, proper attribution is given. Uh, this means that any photos, even those not selected as winners, uh, may be used by DOE and NREL in electronic and print materials. If any ownership of a, photograph, a photograph submitted during the competition is uh, contested in any manner, uh, the prize administrators reserve the right to discontinue use of said photograph and disqualify the photograph from the competition. So we just wanna make sure everybody understands um, the photo usage rules before uploading or sending any photos in through the prize. Okay, we're gonna go through a quick HeroX demonstration really quickly. So HeroX is the official competition platform. Um, this is the solar photo competition page. On HeroX is where you will find information about the prize, resources like the rules document and um, information about Creative Commons, other things like that. So quickly going through how to navigate through HeroX, um, this summary page will give you an overview of the competition including um, the photo categories, the prize amounts, submission guidelines, um, some important dates and how to get started. Uh, you can also find a timeline on HeroX which gives the most current uh, submission deadline, including the date and time, um, when we anticipate announcing winners, that sort of thing. So this is a really important uh, page to check back on. Uh, we also have a forum where you can um, add a new topic if you have a question that you want to ask of either the prize community or the prize administrators. I will note that anything posted on the forum is public, um, publicly visible. So uh, if you have a question that you want the community to weigh in on, the forum is a great place to post that. Uh, or if you have a question that you don't want anyone else to see, we suggest submitting that to our email address, which again is solarphoto at nrel.gov. Uh, the last tab that you're really gonna find helpful is this resources tab. Again, this is where we have the official rules document. We also have a document uh, summarizing all of the file naming conventions and category abbreviations, and then just some important notes on Creative Commons. Um, this is also where we'll post a copy of this recording. Um, so this might be where you found this already. Uh, and eventually we'll be sharing updates um, through HeroX, which 
doesn't appear just yet, but there will be another tab that shows updates and, and those are basically um, messages that we've shared out to provide new information or updates to the community. So getting started with HeroX, if you would like to follow the competition, which we highly recommend you do so you can get those updates sent to your inbox if new information about the prize is posted, um, what you can do is follow the challenge. Um, and then when you're ready to submit your photo, if you've decided that you are going to participate in the prize, you get to solve this challenge. So what we're gonna do is first um, log in if you have a login account. If you are new to HeroX, uh, you would just create this new account here. I am going to log in with my account. So first you'll need to register to compete, which HeroX will prompt you to do. You click register to compete, and basically you're just accepting the terms and conditions and saying that you agree to the official rules. Uh, it'll ask you if you want to compete as a team or create your own team. Um, so I'm gonna say that I wanna create my own team here. Um, you will accept the team agreement and press continue. You can add teammates at a later date if you want to add others to your team. All right, so once you have your team set up, go back to the main page and click this button that says begin entry. From there, you're gonna fill out this form. I know it looks like a lot, I promise it goes by really quickly. Um, so you'll choose a title for your photo. We'll just go through and give this a short description. It's important that you do use um, a description that matches your actual photo and similarly a title that matches your actual photo when you're going through and uploading this. Um, from here, you will say how you heard about the prize. So after you enter your short description, uh, I wanna note this is not where you're gonna upload your final photo submission. If you um, want to upload a version of it here, you can, but it will not accept zip files in this section. So um, don't worry if you, if you don't wanna upload anything in this section. Next, you'll go to the eligibility acknowledgement. Um, so you'll agree that you are a US citizen or the parent or legal guardian of a citizen who's applying. Um, you agree that this, the photos that you're uploading are your own original works. Um, you will agree that your submission package is part of your participation in this prize. Um, and you're agreeing to all of the rules that go along with this prize. Uh, you do also have to enter your digital signature here. In the third section, um, this is where you're gonna add information about your team. It's important to note that this information is not publicly available. So um, including your main team members point of contact information. So that could be you um, and anyone else on your team. Um, you can enter their phone numbers. After that, you can enter your team's location, um, your nine digit zip code. It is important that you enter the nine digits. So look that up uh, if you need the full nine digits. That is important for payment information. So we do need that information. Section five is payment questions. Again, this is not public, but just saying if you receive an award from the solar photo competition, who will receive that award? Um, this does need to be the legal name of the individual who will be receiving that award payment. Um, this is important. We need to make sure that it matches the name on your W-9 form you have to fill out when uh, you are getting paid for winning the prize. This next section is voluntary. They're self-identification questions. You don't have to answer these if you don't want to or don't feel comfortable. However, this helps us get a better understanding of who's participating in the prizes um, and what communities we can continue reaching out to. Um, and then this last section, section seven, is where you're going to actually submit your photo. So like I said, in that top portion where it asks you to upload a photo, um, that's 
optional if you want to upload a smaller version of your photo, but this is where you're going to make sure that that high resolution zip file gets uploaded. Um, so you can go in and choose your file and have that uploaded. Again, make sure you include an image description that uh, very clearly matches what's actually in the photo um, and is descriptive, including any names of people who are in the photo, uh, the state the photo is taken in, the date the photo was taken. Um, all that information is included in the description. Um, if your file, if your zip file is too big to upload here, if uh, you try uploading it and HeroX says that file size is too big, this is where you can then uh, request to send photos over box. So if you are going to do that, just click yes here so we know to then look in our box files for the corresponding photo. Um, if it does it upload here, just click no. Again, if you are going to upload through box, you'll have to email solarphoto at for the link to upload. And then the last thing to do before you save in preview um, and then submit your uh, entry is to agree that you are eligible, um, that you are submitting under the Creative Commons law, and that you are allowing the US government, DOE, and NREL the right to use, publish, copy, distribute, and modify the photos um, that you are uploading through the competition. That is it. You will click Save and Preview. It will not work for me because I didn't enter all of the information in this, um, or it will let me preview what I have so far. And you can continue updating this information if you want to start filling out your submission now. Um, save it and then come back and finish editing it at a later date, that is fine. You just need to um, fill out all of those required forms in order to then be able to submit it. All right, a couple final things about submitting to the prize and some final reminders. Again, each photo must be a high resolution digital copy with a minimum file size of 2100 by 1500 pixels. This does need to be submitted as a zip file. And if your zip file is too large for the HeroX platform, you can upload your photos using Box and just email solarphoto at nrel.gov for that upload link. All photos must be submitted using the file naming convention, photo tile, title underscore your last name underscore category abbreviation. We'll cover the category abbreviations on the next slide. And lastly, you can find the category abbreviations in the rules. So those abbreviations for the category solar and weather, the abbreviation is weather. If you're submitting to the category solar workforce and installation, you would use the abbreviation workforce. For the category concentrating solar thermal power, you would use the abbreviation CSP. For the category research processes, solar technologies in detail and manufacturing abbreviation, you would use research dash manufacturing. For utility scale, commercial solar and grid integration, you'd use the abbreviation utility dash scale. For the category community solar and multifamily housing, use the abbreviation community. For the category residential solar, use the abbreviation residential. And for the category agriculture and solar, solar and nature, and solar and wildlife, use the abbreviation nature. Again, these are all listed in the rules, so uh, feel free to reference the rules document when you are going to name your file and upload your final files. That's it for our presentation. I'll just give some final reminders that the submission deadline is May 23rd at 5 p.m. Eastern time. I highly encourage you to submit earlier than that 5 p.m. deadline just so you have ample time to upload your files, uh, fill out all of the submission questions, and make sure you don't run into any technical difficulties. We will not accept late submissions. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to use the public HeroX forum, or you can email solarphoto at nrel.gov with your questions, and Carly or I will get back to you as soon as we can. Lastly, I would encourage you all to read the rules and make sure you're following the prize on HeroX so you can get updates and reminders sent directly to your inbox when uh, new information is shared, when new resources are shared, or as the deadline is approaching. That's all and good luck in the solar photo competition.